First question is from Mario Castillo. Go ahead. Hey, Justin, uh, during spring, we talked a lot about, um, you know, your weight loss and your, your playing shape. Just wondering, a month into the season, have you noticed much of a difference? Uh, yeah, I mean, I still feel great. I still feel like I'm moving around good, bouncing back good, recovering uh, better. So um, I'm happy with where I'm at. And uh, just uh, offensively, obviously, you, you, you've been very locked in. And yesterday, the team kind of exploded. Um, do you think that's the kind of stuff can carry over? I know momentum in baseball is kind of kind of tough. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, hitting is something that's been talked about that's contagious. And, um, you know, once a couple of guys get rolling, it's easy to get the whole lineup going. And we have that that potential of a lineup to be extremely dangerous and put up cricket, multiple cricket numbers throughout a game. So um, it was nice to kind of see and experience some of that potential yesterday. And yeah, the hope is that it, it continues to carry over and the confidence continues to build. And, and like I said, hitting's contagious, so. Yeah, um, just something that's like not necessarily related to you guys, but last week you, uh, you were in support of the Pioneer League going to that home run derby thing. Um, and I know last year you were very, you know, uh, you suggested it on television and defended it on Twitter, just wondering, um, what do you think of the rule right now that you guys have for extra innings um, with the runner at second base? And, and I guess, why do you think the home run derby might be a val more viable option? Well, I mean, I'm actually a traditionalist and I don't really like messing with the game too much, but if we're going to change the rules, then I, I just think that there maybe is a better way to do it to protect our, our pitchers, protect our innings that guys have to cover, um, keep guys who earn the right to be in, on a major league roster in the major leagues instead of having to be optioned out uh, for having to cover multiple extra inning games and, and doing their job and doing what's asked of them. So I think there's a lot of ways that if we're going to change the rules, we can possibly make it in a way that we really, really guarantee that we're protecting our arms. And uh, just one last one. What do you think about ties? Not a big fan of ties. Uh, never have been. Um, so I, I think there there needs to be a winner and a loser. Um, but like I said, I, I'm a traditionalist. I think that it should be the same. But if we're going to tweak rules and start changing things, then let's really dig into it and figure out the best way to to do that to protect uh, to protect our arms. Thank you. Thanks. Question from Pearson Watson. Go ahead. Hey, Justin. You kind of hit on it a bit there, but just how a game yesterday can help continue to build confidence. But throughout the game with obviously the hits, the runs, did you see a lightness, whether it was just kind of with yourself, with your teammates and the energy of how yesterday's game went? Well, yeah, obviously it's no secret. We've been on a little bit of a, a skid and um, not playing great baseball. Our pitchers have been doing a fantastic job of giving us opportunity to win games, but the offense hasn't really been holding up to their end of the bargain. And, um, you know, the energy yesterday was really good. And uh, from pitch one, from before pitch one, uh, it, it was good. And uh, obviously had a, a very good day offensively and, um, you know, hoping that that momentum, those good feels are, are going to continue to carry over and build confidence for, for everyone in the lineup to, to continue to, you know, go out there and, and, be dynamic and, and be dangerous and, and put up friggin' numbers. Did it feel like that was a game that you all somewhat needed to just start, have that moment to kind of build from? Yeah, I think everyone's well aware that that the potential of the offense is, is there and that's the potential that we have. And I think it was good to actually see it play out that way and, and for reassurance for guys that, you know, we are a really, really good baseball team, a really good offense. Thanks, Justin. Next question from Dave Vasse. Go ahead, Dave. Hey, Justin. Um, the news is, is not really that great for Dustin May. And I was just, from your standpoint, how significant of a loss is that for you guys this season if he's not able to pitch again? Yeah, not really sure um, what the diagnosis is yet. Um, I haven't heard too much, but obviously he was a big part of our rotation and he was 
um, getting better every time he took the mound. And, um, you know, that's, that's a significant loss for us. It's a significant arm that we've relied on and we were planning on relying on and um, just feel uh, terrible for Dustin. And, and obviously it's not something anyone wants to go through or experience and just wishing him uh, a speed recovery and hopefully he can stay mentally strong and, and get through this and talk to a lot of guys who have experienced it and, and come out of it uh, better and stronger. Justin, when you guys have the type of starting pitching that you've been getting all season long, what does that do for you guys? Does it make you feel like you guys have some time to buy yourselves if you're not swinging the bats well for a certain stretch of time? What, what effect does it have to have, you know, one through four, one through five with Dustin to be able to really be, be elite? Well, the way you described it, it makes it seem like it's okay to be complacent, and that's not the case. I think our starting pitching is uh, tremendous. I think they've been doing an outstanding job, and, and like I said earlier, you know, they give us a chance to win games every single night. So um, you know, the way we go about it here is, is worrying about one game at a time and figuring out how to win today, and then uh, we'll worry about the rest of it when, when that comes. So... Um, you know, we definitely recognize and tip our caps to our starters and, and what they've been able to do and accomplish. And like I said, we need to, uh, as an offense, kind of hold up our end of the bargain and, and do our jobs better to uh, get those guys some better results. And you, over the years, you guys have talked about passing the baton. Uh, what exactly is that? It, I think sometimes people believe that just means taking your walk, but is it something more than that? Yeah, it's just putting together a quality of bat. I mean, you don't have to get a hit or get on base to make an opposing pitcher work and 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 put stress on the opposing pitcher. And um, you see it all the time when you have a guy go up there and, and run along at bat, you know, eight, nine, ten plus pitches, and the guy's got to work his butt off to get an out. And, um, you know, it doesn't always end in a good result. But what it does do is – you know, give the next guy or the next couple of guys an opportunity to take advantage of some mistakes. And I think you see it all the time after long ABs, um, you know, that the hitter might not win, uh, but the next guy or the guy after that, you know, ends up coming up and, and doing some damage. And I think that is a direct correlation with, with the quality of a bat. So I think passing the baton is really a responsibility of just going out there and, and, taking a quality at bat and being as tough of an out as you possibly can be to put stress on that pitcher. Thanks, Justin. Next question is from Taylor McGregor. Go ahead. Hi, Justin. I'm the field reporter for the Cubs. So I want to ask you about your boy, Jock Peterson. Um, what did you enjoy about spending time and being teammates with him uh, when you guys were in LA? Yeah, I've known Jock a long time and, uh, was fortunate enough to, to spend a lot of time with him and just, you know, his, his personality, his makeup, he, he shows up, he's the same guy all the time, uh, and always laughing, smiling, um, pretty lighthearted. And he was just a good guy to have around to, to keep everyone kind of loose. Anything you miss, you miss about him? Uh, the, the home run celebrations were always good. Um, you know, even when they were, uh, fence scrapers, you know, he celebrated them like they were going 500 feet, but no one enjoys hitting a homer more than, more than Jeff. <laughs> so here in Chicago, you know, it's kind of said that he was going to get the chance to play every day, obviously um, when he's not injured, but you know him as a baseball player. So how would you describe what you think his ceiling is? Yeah, the sky's the limit with him. I think he uh, is a offensive force. He's got a ton of power. He can go from foul pole to foul pole. And, um, you know, he, he can give you a quality at bat when he, when he locks it in. He's probably one of the toughest outs I've ever played with in a, in a playoff setting. So um, he definitely has it in there. And when he, when he locks it in, um, he's a dangerous hitter. Awesome. Thank you. Next question from Rowan Kavner. Go ahead. Hey, Justin, what's up, man? Um, you had mentioned in the spring, um, just, you know, you weren't able to obviously work out every day at Dodger Stadium like you had in so many years past, whether it's, you know, ground balls or whatever it may be hitting at the stadium. What was different for you with prepping for this year? How, how did you get ready with, 
an off season that was obviously, you know, a lot different than the, the typical for you? Well, I worked out at my house uh, for the majority of my, my training sessions and um, wasn't able to get, you know, starting in January, we're out on the, on the field, taking round balls and hitting, you know, three, four times a week. So um, unable to do that, but I was able to, you know, head out to Northridge where Doug Lotta has his cage that I've hit with for the last seven years and um, spent a lot of time in the cage with him, which actually, you know, probably was a blessing, um, you know, being able to put in all the time in there with him, uh, you know, in person, as opposed to, you know, hitting in the field and sending video and talking about it that way. So um, in ways it was more difficult, but in, in other ways, it was probably more of a blessing to be able to do that. I know, I know you've been asked about the, the home run totals a lot, um, but you've always hit well early in the season. It's just that, the, you know, the powers obviously usually come later. I mean, what, what do you attribute the early season power to the most? Yeah, I don't, I don't really have an answer for you there. I just, like I said earlier, trying to take it at bats, trying to, you know, hit the ball hard. And, um, you know, when you simplify your, your goals and, uh, you know, sometimes good things happen. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's time for one more. Go ahead, JP. Hey, Justin. Um, last year, you guys didn't really have to deal with injuries at all during the season. This year, it's been more of a challenge. Uh, but you've been a Dodger long enough to see how Andrew usually finds someone who can step in and fill a void when another player is lost to injury. Does that experience of seeing you guys step up year after year grow your confidence in the organization over time and maybe that you can do it again this season? Yeah, I think it's something that, I mean, obviously in a perfect world, we don't have to deal with injuries and we have, you know, our guys available all the time, but uh, that's just not the case in our game. And um, we've seen it year after year, um, guys going down, guys getting hurt, young guys coming up, stepping in and having success, helping us win ball games. And I think that's kind of the expectation that we have now. And, and it's a conversation that's had every year in spring training with the 60 plus guys that are in that room. Um, you know, you're in this room because, you know, the front office, Andrew, Doc, they believe that you're going to help us win ball games at some point throughout the year. And as you can see early on in, in the season through one month, um, there's been a lot of turnover in our roster already. And a lot of those guys who were in that room have already you know, been called upon to come up and, and try to help us win games. Thanks, Justin. Thanks.